Hello and welcome to another episode of the DMG Tech Show. I am your host, Jonathan Parkinson, and in this episode, I'm going to be doing a remake of a previous video. That remake is going to be talking about how to set up your XFC desktop using the panels. Now, if you choose to select to use the default panel configuration, you're probably going to have a panel that's going to be up top, similar, as well as a panel probably on the bottom. Uh, for this, though, I will recommend just starting with a default, or sorry, using a blank. Uh, panel which then you will have something like this uh, where you can just drag and drop it wherever you want and we're gonna work within that now we're gonna make something similar to the one on top that's the one I kind of use on a daily basis just something simple easy to use but for this we'll put it on the bottom so I'm just gonna drag and drop this panel towards the bottom uh, now I'm gonna go ahead and either double click with two fingers on my mouse pad or my trackpad or I'm going to right click on a mouse and I'm then going to go to panel preferences now from within the panel preferences you're going to be manipulating and doing everything that you need to do to get something similar to that up top. Uh, so for the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to lock it. Uh, what that's going to do is as you can see I cannot slide that around anymore. That's just going to make sure that it stays down there so I don't accidentally drag and drop it later on. Uh, automatically show and hide panel. Uh, that means it will hide. So it's kind of like I guess IntelliHide if you know what that is. That means it'll hide when you're not using it so when you have windows open or something like that it will hide behind it and it won't actually take up this bottom bar space. So however big this is down here is going to show how big the windows are going to be normally when it's right there. So all windows are going to come to about there unless I have that IntelliHide. Or if I click don't reserve space on borders, uh, that means that it c my windows can hide behind such as something like that. So that's, you know, that kind of works all right, but I only recommend don't reserve uh, window borders if you put it on the side. Uh, reason being is if you use it on the top, that it will cover your buttons, your command buttons, such as these right here. So if it was up here, as you see, I can't go up any higher. But if I right clicked, if I go over that panel, and I click don't reserve any space, and I'll go back to panel two, as you see, I go right over it. So as you see, if I had a full screen right there, I can't do anything right there. It becomes a kind of a pain in the ass. So with that being said, we're gonna come back into here panel preferences once more oh it's just panel preferences already open click that and we're gonna click close so I can reopen that and we're back so that's pretty much how that's gonna work on the very top bars you're gonna see I have panel one panel two panel one is going to be your main panel if you only have one panel it will only be called panel one and that is not removable or deletable in this function you can delete it another way but that'll be in a different video so panel one is gonna be the top one we're gonna be working with panel two uh, so since I have it locked down here, the next thing is going to be row size and pixels. So as you see, when I add that, it gets taller. Uh, that means it's actually adding rows. So I can have applications in multiple rows right here. I personally like to bring it down to... Oh, sorry, this is actually just going to be the size. The next one is going to be how many rows you want to add. So you make sure the very top bar you add is big, as thick as you want it. So I'll do about that. Uh, number of rows, if you want to have rows within inside of it, as you see it grows right there. But since I'm only going to be using run row, as this is one row in itself. And then if I had added two rows, I could put another list of applications right below that. But I'm just going to leave it right there. Uh, the next thing is length. If you just want to have your you know, panel in a set location and not take up a whole bar, that's where you're going to leave your, you know, your length right there. I personally like it across the entire length, which I will do right there for you. Uh, next thing we're going to do is actually uh, look at the mode, vertical and horizon, uh, horizontal. Uh, horizontal is not going to work until I unclick the lock panel, I believe. Which I will then, let's see if I can get this together here. There we go, Death Star. That's what that's going to be, so if I want to move it on the sides right there, I can do that. There's that. And then what was the vertical? Oh, vertical is the exact same thing as desk bar. So we'll do the horizontal, leave it all like that. I want to lock it in place. Now we're going to come to the appearance. Now you're probably going to have your appearance kind of grayed out right here. In order to get this transparent effect and have the capabilities of manipulating your alpha, you want to actually go up into your applications, scroll to settings, go down to window manager tweaks, and you want to go all the way over to compositor, and you want to click this enable display compositing. You can go ahead and close that, and that's going to give you all the options to come in here and completely manipulate your colors. If you want to change backgrounds, images, whatever you're trying to do, as well as, as you see, when I get rid of the alpha, it 
completely transparent. So there's that. The next thing is going to be adding items. As you see, I have the trash cam, applications menu, uh, what windows are currently open, battery percentage, time, as well as what's running in the background, which is this recorder, screen recorder. So you just come over here, hit the plus sign, and you're gonna see you're gonna have a list of uh, apps to add to the actual bar. Now each one is going to be different, you know, depending on what you uh, like to have on your bar. The launcher is going to be uh, just a typical if you want to make your own launcher for a select application, which I do have in another video. Uh, application menu is going to be that right there. Audio mixer, you can have that on there. Battery monitor is going to be that. So what I will do is I will add the kind of main ones here, which is going to be battery monitor, uh, applications menu. Uh, I don't recommend using this clock. I actually recommend coming down and adding the orage I guess you say orage panel clock uh, that's just the most customizable one uh, screenshots all that if you want to add to it unless you change that on your keyboard configuration a uh, separator I will add and that's about oh there's the uh, and the window buttons is gonna be these buttons right here so I'll add that why not Close that out, and as you see, everything's kind of not in order the way I want it. Uh, I like to have my applications menu on the left-hand side, as you see on the very top. I will put the clock on the bottom. Windows button I'll put right there. A battery monitor I'll put right there. So now, as you see, everything's kind of squished to the left-hand side. If I come to the separator, I highlight it, and I come to this little wrench on a piece of paper icon. You can actually then click Expand. As you see, it shoots across the entire window. You then want to come in here and click Transparent. Uh, the reason being is there's actually a little, it's hard to see, but there's little designs where if you had a certain color background, you'd see like a little design right here, just a single design. It's not across the entire image or entire transparent part. It's just a one line right there kind of noting where the separator is, the center of the separator. So once that is done, you can then go into my applications menu and I will click that button again to edit it. Uh, you can come in here if you want to you know, remove your icons, if you don't like seeing icons within the menu. As you see, there's no icons now on the left-hand side. If I come in here and click icons again, bam, got icons. Uh, if you want to have tool tips, a button title, if you like button title or not, you can just click and remove it. Uh, you can come in here and edit it. You can also then click on the icon itself and go into the applications menu, go down to image files, and locate an image you want to use for your button. And that's going to be pretty much it. I'm going to recommend leaving the default menu unless you know what you're doing. And then you can use your own custom menu where you're going to come in here and manipulate what's showing and what's not showing. Which again, that'll be in a later video. And then close that out. Now we're going to come to the Windows buttons. I will edit that. Now if you want to show button labels, as you see in the bottom, we have the labels. If I remove that, it gets smaller. Uh, the reason I don't like to show the labels is within three windows, maybe even four windows, the entire thing's taken up. So it, it just becomes extremely cluttered down there. I like to kind of think, keep things a little simple. Uh, flat buttons, can't really tell, but if you kind of see this image right here, if you notice just around the white edge, there's a little black uh, color or a gray color. If I do flat buttons, it gets rid of all that and just flattens everything out. It's kind of like a shadow behind it. So I'll remove that. Uh, I'll also get rid of the handle. The handle is something you can't really see, but it's a handle right there. Just a small little, you know, uh, little imprint. So I'll remove that to clean things up a little bit. Uh, how do you want to order everything? You know, just so on. It's, everything's customizable in here. Now getting to the battery monitor. Uh, I do not like having that bar right there kind of tacky. If you do like the bar, I recommend coming in here and changing probably the color to a little bit brighter blue as that blue's kind of annoying, kind of, you know, a little dull. Uh, go over to the display. If you don't want to show that bar, just click the bar to get rid of it. Uh, if you want to have something the way, you know, the tool tip, what that is is when you hover over it. So as you say, it's charging from uh, AC. It says high time when percentage is, uh, hide the time and percentage when it's full. Uh, we'll say display uh, display time remaining on tooltip. Close that out. Click it. Well, since I'm on charge, let me see if I remove the charger. There we go. And it looks like it doesn't want to read on my charger right now. But anyway, that's the tooltip normally. Uh, come to the orange, orange panel clock or however you say that. This one's going to be a little bit different. Now, first thing to do is I'm going to recommend removing the frame. Uh, you can't see that, but if I had a white background right now, there'd be a black border around that entire box. Um, I want to then come into and edit the 
uh, line of what I'm going to be working here. So right now it's saying percentage capital X and that is mean it's the local time. Uh, with the local time it's going to give you the seconds as well which I'm not a big fan of the seconds. So if I come in here and I press percentage I I believe, yes there you go, it's going to tell me that's the hour and then I hit the um, in between the little separator and then I'm going to hit percentage and capital M and that's going to give me my minutes. And that's all you need to do for that. Then you can come over here and edit the size of it. So if you want it bigger, a certain font to work with, bold and italic, click OK. And as you see, that's what it does to the bottom down there for you. And close it out. So that's pretty much the basic understanding of how this panel works. Uh, again, the only update I really did with this video, to be honest, is probably just understanding how to make the bar transparent and probably just get a little more in depth and a little more understanding of what's going on. Again, if you do have any questions or comments, always leave them in the uh, section below. As always, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And again, thanks for watching.